For soft, smooth, romantic hands, Jurgen's Lotion. Jurgen's, the makers of Jurgen's Lotion for soft, smooth, romantic hands, present The Amazing Nero Wolf, starring Francis X. Bushman as Nero Wolf, the celebrated criminologist, and Elliot Lewis as Archie. If you've ever been spattered by an enthusiastic puppy who's been out in the rain, then you can sympathize with Nero Wolf's feelings about his secretary, Archie Goodwin. No umbrella is wide enough, no raincoat large enough to protect the corpulent detective against Archie's enthusiastic splashing in the field of crime. Perhaps it's poetic justice, then, that Archie should also be victimized in his turn by a blundering St. Bernard in the person of one minus, so-called because he's minus one brain. Hi, Archie. Hmm? Oh, Minus. Hello. I was uh, kind of waiting for you. Oh, don't think I'm not flattered, Minus, but doesn't anybody else ride in that cab of yours? Suppose I don't want to walk home. Mr. Wolf don't like you to do that, Archie. Well, I'm overwhelmed by his solicitude. Yeah. Huh? Don't skip it. Look, Minus, would it be all right with you if I breathed a little fresh air? No, that's all right with me. Like I heard a guy say, live and leave live. Yeah. Well, then, let's leave live by all means. Okay. <laughs> Unharness the horsepower. Huh? What horse? No, never mind. Drive. Oh, yeah. You, uh, you was visiting a dame? Visiting? Mm-hmm. Yeah. A dame, well... Hey, Arch. Hmm? Yeah? Is it, is it true what they say about dames? Definitely. I mean, what do they say about them? Well, some fellas say, well, that dames, uh, well, that they is the moissanary type. Is that a fact? Well, frankly, Minus, I wouldn't know. No dame has been mercenary with me since the seventh grade in P.S. 198. Ah, uh, that was the year when I cornered the Miggies market, you know. Oh? <laughs> How'd she make out? Well, I had to take up checkers after she got through with me. <laughs> hey, watch that red light, Minus. How can I watch the light to see where I'm driving at the same time? Well, you got two eyes, haven't you? Yeah, but they both see the same thing. Ain't that surprising? <laughs> Almost as amazing as the ears business. No, that ain't so, Archie. Oh, look, don't tell me you hear different things with each ear. No, only my left ear don't hear nothing. The, uh, the drum has been punctuated. Puncture. Uh, pardon me while I go into a comma. Hey, Archie, you know I got a lot of commas. Will you say that again, Minus, slowly? I'm loaded with commas. And you know how come? I just bought a book for a quarter. You bought a book? Minus, can you read? No, uh, not good, but, uh, heck, Archie, I didn't buy the book for reading. <laughs> oh, silly of me, of course not. Nobody buys a book for reading. What did you buy it for? Sitting. You see, Archie, this ain't a new cat. Oh, it isn't? No. And the driver's seat has been sagging, see? The, the springs in it give up. Archie and the springs, we both give up. Well, I gotta have springs on account of I was beginning to sit so low I could only see the sky when I was driving. You know, Archie, the sky's a beautiful thing. Them colors, oh, them sunsets. Oh, Minus, you have poetry in your soul. Yeah, but I didn't have no springs in me seat. So when I seen this big fat book for only a quarter, I bought it. Now, now I sit on the book. And, and... no more sunsets. Uh-huh. Uh, would it be indelicate to inquire what book you're sitting on? I mean, the title. Oh, big words. Uh, something about the improvement of the, the understanding. <laughs> Minus, you couldn't have bought a better book for the purpose, now that the improvement of the undersitting is out of print, of course. A serial, huh? Yeah, no paper. Hey, hey, hey. Hey. Boy, hey, Arch. Get out of the car nearly socked it. Well, sock it back. Huh? Never mind, just let it get past us. Yeah, but it don't want it. See? It's headed right at us again. Well, pull ahead fast. Maybe you can get out of its way. Whoever's driving it must be nuts. Yeah, well, I gotta get out of the way then. Hey, hey. No, not a guy shooting at us. What'll they be thinking of next? About improving their aim, I guess. That car's behind us. I can't see who's at the wheel, but whoever it is, I don't like him. Minus, can you speed up a little? Well, I'll try, but this cab ain't got but one speed. Oh. Ooh, oh, that was close. He's pulling up on us. Minus, see that lunch wagon up ahead? Yeah. Drive right up the front steps. Yeah, but Archie, I ain't hungry. Do what I tell you. It's our only chance. we got to attract attention and companionship. Are you lonely, Archie? Minus! <laughs> Amazing Nero Wolf, brought to you by the makers of Jurgen's Lotion, will continue in just a moment. 
But first, this is Jim Bannon, who lately heard a nice woman say to her son... About your welcome home party, dear. We must ask Dorothy. Okay, Mother, if you say so. Well, you don't sound enthusiastic, dear. Don't you like Dorothy? She's such a nice girl. Oh, she's a nice girl, I guess, but... But, well, gosh, Mother, does she have to have such red, rough hands? No, no girl has to have rough hands, no matter what work she does. There's Jurgen's lotion, and Jurgen gives the hands very efficient softness protection. And now you know Jurgen's lotion is more effective than ever. During the war, we made discoveries about skin care, which Jurgen scientists used to make Jurgen's lotion even finer. Women say this post war Jurgen's lotion protects even longer, makes the hands feel even smoother and softer. It's in the stores now, same bottle. So don't let rough hands handicap you. Just be surer than ever now and help keep your hands delightful with Jurgen's lotion. And now back to the Jurgen's lotion program, The Amazing Nero Wolf, starring Francis X. Bushman and Elliot Lewis. Is he all right? Uh, I ain't sure. Hey, Archie. Look what I got sitting in me lap. The radiator. A hot number, huh? Drop it. Okay. Ow. Take it easy. Hey, Minus, you better climb out of there. Hey, wait a minute. Wait a minute, Archie. Well, I must have cut my jugular vein. I'm bleeding to death. Yeah, let me see. Uh-huh. Mortuary, huh? Archie, I'm leaving you the cab. Minus, that isn't blood. Taste it. Taste? Okay. Ha- ketchup. Good, huh? Oh, a pistol packing monster must have scrammed. Come on, we better get home. Hey, what uh, do you mean driving into my wagon like this? Oh, uh, we thought it was a drive in, you know. We'll be going to the dog. What do you uh, want? A uh, hamper like around a bun. I already got the catch. Uh, Look, mister, there was an accident. Here's a couple of bucks. We'll send a towing car to get the cab out of your joint, but we're in a hurry at the moment. Minus. Yeah? Grab that sitting book and let's go. What do you want the book for? You want something to read? Not exactly, but I could use something to improve my understanding. <laughs> So you see, Mr. Wolf, how narrowly we escaped a fate worse than death. Archie, no histrionics, please. Oh. Now, your conclusion. Oh, the book. Nobody loves me well enough to kill me. Minus hadn't been bothered before he bought that book, therefore... It seems probable. Minus? Huh? Oh, I was just looking into this here volume. Hey, listen to what this guy says. Hmm? There is a devil haunts thee in the likeness of an old fat man. A ton of man is thy companion. <laughs> hey, Archie, was he writing about Mr. Wolf? Confound <laughs> you, Minus. Then I... he says, peace, ye fat guts, lie down. Yeah. And the other guy says, have you any levers to lift me up again, being down? <laughs> hey, Archie, the guy who wrote that must have been acquainted with your boss. Blast you, he's been dead for 300 years. That was from Henry IV, part one, act two, scenes two and four. By one, William Shakespeare. I never heard of him. Well, he's a fairly well-known type English playwright, Minus. But then who was he writing about? Uh, somebody called Falstaff, I think. Falstaff? Falstaff? Oh, you mean that poet on, on the radio with Fred Allen? For the time uh-huh. being, Minus, we will accept that definition. Now, let me see that book. Yeah, here you are, Mr. Wolf. Yeah, down with... Yes, false cover. And underneath... Good heavens. Huh? A first folio Shakespeare. Is that bad? Are you sure, boss? Quite sure. Well, th- well, then no wonder Minus and I were target for tonight. Boss, how much is that thing worth? Thousands, Archie. Heaven alone knows how many. Holy gee. Hey, Archie, I got a bargain. You're likely to get a few bullets for the same price, too. I, uh, hope I'm not a good prophet. Shall I scream for help, boss, or open the door? Open the door. I'm curious to see who it is. Okay. And if I die, I will have died for literature. Hello. I'd rather live. Hello. May I come in? You'd better. If my eyes pop any further, they'll fall out of my face. Very sweet of you to say that. Oh, yeah, Archie, will you shut that bastard door? Mm-hmm. Mr. Wolf's getting restless this way, please. <clears throat> By the way, my name is Archie. I'm Susan Lee. Susan. Beautiful name. Oh, uh, Mr. Wolf, Miss Lee. Mm. Hey, Archie. Oh, yes, minus Miss Lee. Uh, 
We have met him before. Oh, yes. You're the gentleman I sold the wrong book to. <laughs> sure. Uh, she's the name at Crown Bookstore. Oh, this book, Miss Reese? Yes, yes, that's the one, Mr. Wolf. Oh, I'm terribly sorry, but I really shouldn't have sold that book. Why not? Well, I... Uh, I'm very attached to it. Oh, indeed. Yes, you see, I I went to school with its author. Oh, you carry your 300 years very well, Susan. Oh. Oh, uh, well, uh... Uh, She means, of course, that Spinoza, who wrote The Improvement of the Understanding, lived 300 years ago. Why, yes, of course he did. Uh, what I meant was that I studied the book in high school. Spinoza in high school? Well, it was a, a, a very progressive school. Yes, no doubt. And you're a very bad liar. How dare you say a thing like that? I'm just trying to... Oh, I, I am a bad liar, aren't I? Among the poorest in my long experience of liars. Why do you want the book, Miss Lee? Because I'll lose my job if I don't get it back. Mr. Garvey was furious. He's my boss. He owns the Crown Bookstore. I see. Tell me, Miss Lee, did Minus leave his name, address, and probable whereabouts uh, when he bought the book? No, of course not. But you see, his buying a book on philosophy seems so odd. Oh, yes? I... <laughs> well, I'll have you know, young lady, that I'm a student of, 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 of what you said. Yes. So I noticed his license number. And then when Mr. Garvey returned and made such a fuss about the book, I called the police and they told me that that cab had just entered a lunch wagon. I went to the lunch wagon, and, well, here I am. So you are. However, I'm afraid Minus has grown attached to the book. As he said, he's a student of philosophy. Therefore, I'm afraid he's quite determined to let the purchase stand. Oh, but he can't. I'll lose my job. Well, perhaps he'll help you find another one. Oh, but that's unfair. The book only costs a quarter, and I'm willing to pay him for his lost time. Can you assess the risk of death, Miss Lee? What? Minus was almost killed as a result of his innocent desire for the higher thoughts. Yeah, me too. Be still, Archie. You never had a higher thought in your life. Okay. You take the higher thoughts and I'll take the lower thoughts. And I better have a lot more fun than you do. How can you joke about something that's so serious to me? Uh, Archie, take Miss Lee back to her bookstore. You will explain to Mr. Garvey that the purchaser of the book is an opinionated and stubborn character who refused to return it. Oh, me? That may help absolve Miss Lee of the responsibility. And now, good night. But, but Sorry, I... Susan. He's got his eyes closed, and when he does that, it's a lost cause. Come on, we'll go see Mr. Garvey. If necessary, I'll knock him down for you. All right. It is sweet of you. Oh, think nothing of it. Uh, Susan, hmm? may I call you Miss Lee? <laughs> You know, Susan, I should have bought more books in the past. Why, Archie? Well, then I might have met you sooner, and my life might have been a far, far better one than it is now. Oh, is anything seriously wrong with it? Well, nothing that a good woman couldn't cure. I mean, uh, oh, Crown Bookstore. Well, this your little corner of learning? Yes, and when I think of what Mr. Garvey will say. Oh, well, let's go in. All righty. Books. Mm-hmm. Lots of them. Well, then why is Garvey so upset about the one you sold? I don't know, Archie, but... Hey, this is funny. What is? Mr. Garvey, he should be here. Oh, maybe he's shy. Oh, I've... Uh, oh, Archie! Yeah, I heard that. See, they come from the back. He must be in the stock room. I think we'd better take stock, then. You stay out here. Archie, you don't let's, think... Let's suspend intellectual operations for a minute, huh? This is the door? Yes. Uh-huh. I'll see... Oh. Susan? Yes? This Garvey? Has anything happened to him? <gasps> oh. Yes, Archie. That's Mr. Garvey. Better start looking for another job, Susan. Oh, no. Oh, yes. He's dead. You got that phone. No, let me. Must be Wolf. This is no time for the kind of phone conversations he likes. Yeah. Archie? Uh huh. Dead? Very. Bullets. How long? Just now. Notify the police. Yeah. Instruct them to compare the bullets with which he was shot. With those embedded in Minus' cab, then come home alone. Right. Hey, wait a minute. Who do you think is dead? Garvey, naturally. What's natural about it? Shakespeare, Henry IV, Part One. He owed God a debt. <laughs> And 
That, Mr. Wolf, is the story of my adventures among the books. Uh, and Miss Lee. Very nice. I mean, she was upset. Police. Upset, too, but not nice. I see. No arrests as yet? No, they got a couple of guys in mind. Uh, on what evidence? We'll see in reading a book. Ah. Archie, you dismay me. Oh, that's not what I do to Miss Lee. I think I'll go to sleep and dream about Miss Lee. Fiddlesticks, you have work to do. At this hour? At this hour. Uh, take this, please. What is it? A list of first folios in New York. The names of their owners and their telephone numbers. Uh -huh. Well, not a Damon, no what? Nevertheless, I want you to phone each and every one of them. But, boss, it's one o'clock in the morning. True. But you see, it is possible the one from whom that folio was stolen still hasn't realized his loss. Once he does, he'll call the police, which will only lead to confusion. Whereas if we get hold of him tonight, it would lead to our getting a fee. Why not? As an air of sharp practice, Mr. Wolf. Yes. You and Minus must be to discuss it sometime. In the meanwhile, Archie, the phone. You know, boss, I thought I knew everything one angry man could call another, but these Shakespeare collectors, they know words I never even heard of. The higher education, no doubt. Oh, I wouldn't exactly call it higher. Hello. Boss, hello. What's this one called? James Blitherow. Uh, Mr. Blitherow? Yes. Yes, what do you want? Uh, you own the first folio of Shakespeare, do you not, sir? If this is the Gallup Hole... Oh, it isn't. Will you take a look and see if your folio is where it should be? Merchant, what do you mean? I'm speaking for Nero Wolf, the private detective. I think it might be worth your while to check. It's kept under lock and key in my library, of course. Uh, but hold on, young man. Right oh, Blitherow. He's going to look. Boss, if he finds his book in there and starts yelling Shakespeare at me, will it be all right if I answer him in the choice language of 10th Avenue? Uh, hello, hello. Uh, yes, Mr. Blitherow. My folio. It's gone. Jackpot, boss. Ask him to call in the morning. Uh, Mr. Blitherow, if you'll call here in the morning, Mr. Wolf will be able to help you. Good night, sir. Uh, uh, if this is a joke... Mr. Wolf never jokes where large sums of money are concerned. At 11 tomorrow morning, Mr. Blitherow, good night, sir. I think I'll come. Satisfactory. And now to bed, Archie. The morning promises to be a pleasant and remunerative one. Uh-huh. Except for Mr. Garvey, who won't know that it's morning. Rapid. Uh, Archie! I heard it. Downstairs. Hey, quickly. A burglar. Quickly it is. Watch out, watch out, wherever you are. Ah, the office. Who's in... Oh, you want to play, you... Oh. Uh, confound this getting up and walking in the middle of the night... Uh, I shall double my fee on this case. Archie! Oh. Uh, my office. Oh. Oh. Archie? Oh. If that young fool has got himself murdered, I'll... What'll you do? Fire me? Uh, bah. Get up. Sure. Hold the floor down a minute, will you? Ooh. Ooh. Why will people persist in hitting me on the head? They want to avoid hurting you. Oh, fine. Uh, this room is a shambles. Yeah, it's a great time to be worrying about the room when... Hey, the burglar. Has departed. Where'd you put that folio? In my desk. Desk? Yes. Doors open. Mr. Wolf, it's my duty to inform you that we are no longer the proud possessors of a first folio Shakespeare. Fiddlesticks. You also dread it in old fudge, but that big brown book is gone, Mr. Wolf. So it is. But that false cover was no longer a cover for the folio, Archie. I removed the folio itself from between the covers and substituted... <laughs> you substituted what? Your priceless collection of old esquires. <laughs> But I still don't forgive you for practically giving away my esquires. Boss, you know, thinking back over the events of last night, I have come to a conclusion. Yes? 
The only one who could have swiped the folio was Susan. Indeed. Sure. Oh, but oh, there's only one difficulty. Which is? Uh, well, whoever it was that I wrestled with last night wasn't Susan. Uh, how do you know? Well, uh, well, the subject's a delicate one, but it was not Susan. Oh, I see. And why do you think it could only have been Miss Lee? Well, because she was the only one who knew we had the stolen folios. The door, Archie. Wait a minute. Somebody else knew. Precisely. And I rather think he's pressing our doorbell. Archie. Uh-huh. I will promptly sock him. Nonsense. Let me do it. I assure you, it will hurt him more. Huh? <laughs> I guess you're right at that. Ah, come in, sir. Thank you. Mr. Wolf, straight ahead. Or do you already know your way in? I beg your pardon. Ah, you're Mr. Wolf. Uh, be seated, Mr. Blitherow. Your first folio Shakespeare was stolen some time yesterday. Do you want it back? Of course, ma'am. And can you get it for me? My fee will be $1,000. Archie will accept your check. A thousand dollars? Well, what guarantee do I have? To... None. Unless you prefer to have me remember last night and prosecute you for burglary and assault. Oh, this is ridiculous. Oh, be still. Or perhaps you acquired those bruises on your face while shaving. Well, I, I admit I, I didn't trust you. I did try to recover my own property. But, uh, well, here's your check. Thank you. And keep those esquires in a safe place, you know. Now, uh, Mr. Wolf. Mr. Blithrow, did you have the folio insured? Certainly. For $100,000. Huh? <laughs> you seem surprised. But every collector does that. True. But does every collector thereupon plot to have his folio stolen so that he can receive his insurance while retaining ownership of the folio at the same time? Mr. Wolf, you're mad. Sit down and be quiet. When you burgled this place last night, you departed hastily with a large brown book on its cover, the title, The Improvement of the Understanding. Now, Mr. Blitherow, how did you know that the folio had been bound in a false cover, for one thing, and in that particular one for another? So sure that you didn't even bother to examine the inside. <laughs> Well, I, I, I... Because, I... Mr. Blitherow, you hired Mr. Garvey to steal it from you and keep it until you had collected your insurance. Boss, that means Garvey may have tried to double-cross him, so he killed Garvey. No. No. I didn't do that. I admit I did plan to defraud the insurance people, but I didn't commit murder. Then what were you doing near the bookstore last night? But I, I was just passing by. I thought I might stop in to speak to Garvey, make sure that everything was all right. Well, why didn't you? Well, the store was dark. Uh, just a minute. How did you know I was near the store? I didn't until you told me just now. Boss, my congratulations. That was as neat a trap as I've ever seen. And it puts the lid on Mr. Blitherow. Oh, indeed, Archie. Then perhaps you can explain why Miss Lee has just surreptitiously entered the room with a, uh, that is a revolver in your hand, isn't it, Miss Lee? <laughs> Amazing Nero Wolf brought to you by the makers of Jergens Lotion will continue in just a minute. But first, this is Jim Bannon with an idea for Christmas. For the girls at the office, the members of your club, for the toe of any woman's Christmas stocking, you can give a lovely gift for a dollar plus tax if you give Jergens Lotion. It's a flattering gift because Jergens Lotion is the hand care the Hollywood stars prefer seven to one. The Hollywood stars use Jergens Lotion seven to one? Yes, with all the hand care preparations there are, the stars seven to one choose Jergens Lotion. And this fine hand care is even finer now thanks to wartime research. What do you mean Jergens Lotion is finer now? Know what women said after testing this post war Jergens? They said it makes their hands feel even softer and smoother and protects even longer. Oh, I'd like a bottle of that post-war Jergens lotion myself. It's in the stores now, very same bottle, still 10 cents to $1 plus tax. And for Christmas, the $1 bottle has a gay Christmas wrapping. From teenage to grandmothers, to please your women friends, give them Jergens lotion for Christmas. <laughs> And now back to the Jurgens Lotion program, The Amazing Nero Wolf, starring Francis X. Bushman and Elliot Lewis. Yes, 
Yes, this is a revolver in my hand, Mr. Wolf, and I can use it. The way you used it on Garvey last night? I don't know what you're talking about. Then why are you here? For that folio. I want it. And Goodwin, stop inching toward me. Why, you used to call me Archie. They'll be calling you the late, Mr. Goodwin, if you don't stop. Archie, stay where you are. This Lee means business. I'm glad you understand that. Just as I understand a great many other things. For example, the fact that you didn't sell the book to Minus by mistake. Garvey would have kept it well hidden. Therefore, you stole the book and used Minus to get it out of the store at a time when you could prove to Garvey you hadn't left the premises. That may be true. I want the book. Where is it? Thus, having convicted you of theft, convicting you of murder should be fairly simple. Murder? You can't prove anything. I admit you're right there. I can't. Not unless someone saw you at the store at the time of the murder but and... that's uh, impossible. I'll be quiet. Mr. Blithero has something to say. Mr. Wolf, I can furnish you with that proof. I didn't want to say anything before, but it, when I passed the store last night, I saw her there. Indeed. Archie, I want you to remember what Mr. Blithero has just said. Miss Lee, you'd to remember as well. You're crazy. He's lying. He's furnished me the evidence I shall need You'll to... never use it against me. Of course not. The evidence he furnished me shall serve to convict him. What, Blithero? What did you say? Blithero, you're not only a murderer, but a fool. You couldn't have seen Miss Lee at the store during the critical period last night, because at that time... Miss Lee was energetically chasing and firing at the cab containing Mr. Goodwin and Minus. I needed one additional iota of evidence against you to add to the evidence I already had of fraud. And in your eagerness to frame Miss Lee, you furnished it. Thank you. Oh, dear. Uh, yes. Yes. I've got a gun, too. Miss Lee, drop yours. Quickly. Yeah, that's good. And now to take care of you. Of all of you. Hey, I, I got some more books. Oh, for a quarter. Take out, Chief. Oh, take the gun. Let's go. Let's go. Miner, huh? take out your heaviest book and hit Mr. Blithero on the head with it, will you? Why, sure. There. I said. Satisfactory, Minus. Archie, do you have his gun? Uh-huh. Then point it at Miss Lee. I think she's trying to reach her own. Now, Susan, behave or Archie goes bang-bang. Archie, stop this nauseating whimsicality and phone the police. We have a crook and a murderer to turn over to them. Minus. Huh? Close your mouth. It makes you look even less intelligent. If that's possible. I was thinking. Good heavens, no. Yeah. From my experience in this here case, I come to the conclusion that books is real useful. Splendid. Does that mean you're going to learn how to read? <laughs> but if I ever get tired of driving a cab... Maybe I, too, write a book. Oh, that's wonderful, Minus. What's it going to be about? Well, Archie, how about my own life story, huh? You know, a guy sees a lot of things in the rearview mirror of a taxi. A uh, most commendable project, Minus. And I believe I can suggest a title for your autobiography. Huh? From the works of the bard himself. You can, Mr. Wolf? What is it? From Macbeth, Act 5, Scene 3. A tale told by an idiot. <laughs> Tonight's program concludes the current series of The Amazing Nero Wolf, starring Francis X. Bushman as Nero Wolf and Elliot Lewis as Archie. Brought to you by the makers of Jurgen's Lotion. The characters of Nero Wolf and Archie Goodwin were created by Rex Stout. Tonight's play was written by Lewis Bettys and produced and directed by Travis Wells. This is Jim Bannon saying goodnight for Jurgen's Lotion, the lotion for soft, smooth, romantic hands. This is the Mutual Don Lee Broadcasting System. <laughs>